Good morning, Internet. Yashoda here with West Coast Yoga. Welcome to part five of our Zonal Acharya series, where we will be exploring the highly unusual life and legacy of one of the most charismatic of the Zonal Acharyas, Hunk Siddhuta. Let me preface this presentation with a cautionary statement regarding ISKCON history, specifically ISKCON history in the 80s. As with all first-hand accounts of the period, we strive to distill the most consistent narrative across a substantial period of time. Please understand that the purpose of this video is not to discredit ISKCON as an institution or create a smear campaign in the gurus or GBC in general. This video series aims to shed light on a significant part of our shared history. Between 1978 and 1986, some very significant incidents took place worldwide which shaped ISKCON policy for years to come and helped to inform how we perceive authority within the movement. To my knowledge, there is no current reference material authorized by ISKCON in regards to the 1980s. The period has been redacted from public ISKCON records. My intent is to shine light on the episodes that can be verified, and thus we can develop a healthy approach to our own history and avoid the pitfalls of quarrel and hypocrisy which have, until now, greatly characterized this period and its record. And so, without further ado, the life and times of Hong Sedutta. Hong Sedutta, also known as Hans Carey, was born on May 27, 1941, in Brunswick, Germany. His father served in the German army. Hong Sedutta, even as a young man, was deeply philosophical and came in touch with the early pioneers of the Hare Krishna movement, eventually taking initiation in 1967. Before long, Hong Sedutta emerged as a powerful preacher. His preaching program created waves in Europe, with the BBT's freshly translated literature, and under his guidance, many centers were opened. Hong Sedutta helped revolutionize Europe by leading Sankirtan parties, and the distribution of thousands of Srila Prabhupada's books to such an extent that Srila Prabhupada appointed him as a lifetime trustee of the BBT in 1974. Hong Sedutta emerged as a GBC in Germany and England during the mid-1970s, and he later took sannyas in 1976. When Srila Prabhupada left the planet in 1977, the Zonal Acharyas emerged and at the 1978 GBC meetings in Mayapur, he was given a broad preaching platform including the Seattle Temple, which although only a medium-sized temple, was extremely successful in fundraising. During the late 1970s, the GBC were experimenting with a preaching model called the Women's Sankirtan Party, whereby male devotees were traded from one temple to another for an equal number of female devotees. The logic of this program was that women were more successful at fundraising with cookies and paraphernalia than the men were. Seattle Temple was at the precipice of this social experiment, and when Srila Prabhupada left the planet, Hong Sedutta inherited the predominantly female Seattle Temple as his preaching headquarters. By 1980, however, serious mental issues began to emerge for the influential Swami. He complained of constant migraines and began to self-medicate with powerful prescription drugs and eventually alcohol. Following a prolonged alcohol binge, Hong Sedutta was arrested for firing semi-automatic rifles at a car dealership. His mugshot became part of ISKCON's most sordid history. The GBC responded by placing Hong Sedutta on probation and taking away his guru status. These acts led to the Topanga Canyon meetings where Tamal Krishna Swami and Hong Sedutta began making a case against their godbrothers and the entire Zonal Acharya system. By 1984, Hong Sedutta publicly gave up his sannyas lifestyle and was excommunicated from ISKCON. He began experimenting with alternative philosophies regarding initiation, and later, in 1993, Hong Sedutta renounced his disciples, offering them instead to Srila Prabhupada. Hong Sedutta then began advocating the philosophy of post-Samadhi Rithik initiation, and at this time he began initiating disciples on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. 
An important turning point took place in 1977 when the BBT sued Hanksaduda due to the fact that he was publishing Prabhupada's original pre-1978 books under his own separate banner of the BBT. By 1998, the BBT reached a legal settlement with Hanksaduda officially renouncing the title of BBT trustee. However, more importantly, Hanksaduda received a large cash settlement from the BBT, and now he was granted legal authority to publish Prabhupada's pre-1978 books under his own banner. This court case has paved the way for other publishers like Veda Guya in Hawaii to publish high quality versions of the pre-1978 books and subsequently to compete with Veda Guya, the BBT reinstated an original edition Bhagavad Gita which they continue to print to this day. Hansa and his family currently live in Corvodale, California where he continues to advocate for Ritvik initiation. I hope this episode has been informative. Please join me next time as we examine one of the darkest episodes of Zonal Acharya history with the tragic story of Baba Nanda. As always, I'm Yashoda with West Coast Yoga.